What is up, y'all? It is the iBuyer Experiment in the house coming to you live. Well, not live, but on a podcast, maybe live <laughs> if you're listening to us. Hey, you know, I went with it, went it for it, and I swung in a miss. But anyway, what's up, guys? How hey. are we doing? Well, we're live right now. Yeah, we yes. are live. <laughs> yeah, I am not with the robot. Other. Yeah, no, it's going well. We were just kind of talking about how we can add value to our viewers and our listeners. And I think a common theme that we're all experiencing is we are in a winter season. Yep. real estate yes winter, winter is upon us winter, winter is, is upon, upon us. us you gotta say it like the guy does in hbo <laughs> you said it was game of thrones right kai winter is upon us have you guys ever seen that I, i've I never watched that. i'm not a game of throner at all but i've seen that excerpt like a million times like right like all the memes people love that show i've not watched it never seen it you don't watch a ton of tv mm -mm. i've have you seen the key? very little no well, maybe you can comment and tell us that we're missing something out there. Game of Thrones is where it's at. I don't know. So winter is upon us. Yes, it and, is. And um, everyone's thinking, well, how long is this winter going to be? Mm. What do you guys think? I, I think, think I think we're almost, I think we're almost, I think it's it's heating up already. To be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. The ice give is it, thawing. Give it an example. I mean, why, today. Why is it heating up? Um, why is it heating up? I think it's. Uh, I, I think. I think people are are reading the news too much. They're yeah. listening to all these pundits and saying the market's, you know, going down. And I just don't believe it. I just don't. Uh, I don't. I don't see it in the in the inventory. And in well, in um, the metrics, the, the sales definitely have gone down. But um, 2019, you know, there was it took 60 to 90 days to to sell a house a property. Yeah. Now that's what's going on right now. So. Yep. Um, I don't think it's anything different. It's just uh, it, it went from it went from uh, the market being super hot to <clears throat> just kind of like a normal market, like overnight. Yeah, overnight. Yeah, and yeah, and, the and shift did, was so did fast. Prices come down. Yes, they did come down, but they came down from where people <laughs> were desperate and they were to the saying, moon. I yeah. will, you know, pay fifty thousand dollars over. I don't care. I just need this. I just need this house. And yep. you know, they had a two point one percent interest rate, and fine, yep. whatever. Spend fifty thousand dollars more, but now, yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're not, they're not paying that fifty thousand, and they're they're paying a little higher interest rate. Yep, no big deal. So if you're watching the news, you're reading all the news, watching these YouTube guys that are saying, "Oh, the market's crashing, and it's gonna crash. It's gonna be, you know, the worst crash in history." And it's like, from what? There's this one. Where's the inventory gonna come from? One yeah, guy from on where? YouTube Where's the inventory? About how the market's gonna crash, and he's talking about like, look at where you want to live in the U.S. because it's gonna crash in Atlanta, and it's gonna crash in you know Phoenix, <laughs> and it's gonna crash. And he's seriously Set like, your target. Yeah, he's yeah. he's telling people like, be ready, be waiting to scoop up these properties when you can get them for like thirty cents on the dollar. And I'm sitting there going, this is ridiculous. Well, it, that's why I don't like any of those series because people are always trying to time the top, time the bottom. Good luck if you if you have that crystal ball, you're beyond a multi multi millionaire. And, and you know if you can do you're that, a billionaire. And, yeah, you're, you're a, a Ray billionaire. Dalio. Yes, in, in that particular <laughs> circumstance, <laughs> you're Ray Dalio. Uh, Nose sorry. hairs. Yep. Nose. Hairs. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Great wisdom. <laughs> we love that guy. Yeah, but brilliant mind. Yeah. So I think that perception though is interesting because perception can become reality. Yes. We were talking about that yep. yesterday. Self-fulfilling prophecies. Like whatever's happening in the economy, whether you call it a recession, whatever you're calling this, this period of economic um, status. Yeah. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> we're calling it Positioning. a recession. 76% uh, of Americans believe that we are in a recession. That's a crazy and high number to me. It you is told very me high. 76% yeah. yeah. of Americans watch how many the news. people <laughs> yeah is that based off of though because yeah what a, is the what a, is a hundred thousand it was actually <laughs> smaller it was yeah. a very small survey conducted okay. by cinch home services but i think the takeaway is is that a lot of people think that we're in a recession uh, they also kind of explored what people would be more likely to do when it comes to home buying during a recession and what they found is is that current homeowners were kind of split about half of them said that they'd be more likely to buy a home during a recession and about half of them said they'd be less likely to buy a home during a recession but the interesting thing is for renters, um, less renters said that they would be more likely to buy a home during a recession than not. So that kind of concerns me mm. because homeownership is declining somewhat. And if uh, we are, you know, upon economic times, whether we're in a recession or not, if they believe that we are and they say that they're less likely to buy a home, that definitely hurts. And it does. So yeah. let's let's talk through some of the reasons why uh, buying would be better than renting. Well, f flat out, right? Like, I mean, like we were just talking beforehand in an, in an, 
in the inflation period, it is smarter to buy assets that are going to appreciate based on market trends, right? With inflation, such as an, a, an asset like a house, right? Not just hanging on to that cash that's depreciating or, you know, I guess faulting with the, with the rise of inflation in your bank account, right? I don't know what the best way is to explain that. But the other thing is flat out, what is that stat with like, um, home? I don't remember exactly what it is, but basically homeowners are like four times more wealthy than renters. Oh, way more than that. Yeah, that's incredible. So the average net worth of a homeowner is over $200,000. And it's not all tied into their real estate, right. but a large portion of it is their real estate. However, the average net worth of a renter is about $6,000. So 40 times greater net worth yeah. of homeowners than renters. Yeah, not four times, yeah. 40 times. 40 yeah, okay, I, I could have swore there was a four in there, which it's is funny massive. that, yeah, it's been a long time since yeah. I thought about that. So and that's from the Federal Reserve. And, and so, so data you, I trust, yeah. maybe. Yeah, <laughs> give or take. I mean, someone, someone once told me buy low and sell high in real estate, right? Yep. So if we're in a recession, this is probably the, a the lower time, time, right? I mean, it could get a little bit lower in the next six to 12 months, maybe a little bit. But yeah. if you're in the market to, that you need to buy a house, you're going to live in something for five, 10 years. Well, and not no only reason. that too, right? There's a lot of like cycles, right? A lot of times it's like a five to seven year trends ups, five to seven years down, like, you know, like balanced, you know, down. And I think we've kind of entered in more of that, that normal trend. And I mean, obviously there's a lot of things that are going on from that macroeconomic point of view with, you know, COVID, how that hit, they obviously had to infuse so much capital in the marketplace um, to that. assist, well, whether they had to or not, they did, <laughs> right? They did, they pr we printed monopoly money and just pumped it into the system like at it, it, it an extraordinary rate, which has obviously caused, you know, you to spend $30 when you go to Taco Bell now. But anyway, I digress. Um, Elliot's really bitter about the rising cost of Taco Bell. Well, yes, I mean, is. you know, it's like it's like my it's like my um, my <laughs> my guiltless pleasure. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> um, guilty. guilty. Guilty pleasure. There we go. <laughs> Dang it! My mom messed up today in my delivery. Yeah, another reason why it's a good time to buy a house right now is one you're likely to get a better deal than you were six months ago, like how Jay brought up where, you know, you're not in a competition of you, hey, you gotta be on average 35 to $60,000 above this price if you even wanted to compete. Now what we're seeing is, you know, a lot of, whether it's the agent or the homeowner or a combination, I don't think reality set in for everybody yet. So they're still pricing high. So I think there's a there's an artificial reason that things are having so many price reductions is because things are still being listed high and they're like oh well i guess i can't get you know my well, neighbor that got 450 but really in, i should have priced mine at in 4, february 10, 400 <laughs> then so now they they priced high now they're coming back down to where the marketplace is going to say okay now this this is more along the lines of where it should be so it seems like there's just these massive price reductions but i think people were still over overpaying for their property so hopefully in another 60 to 90 days we'll start seeing people price their properties right but you're probably still going to be able to obtain a property below list price. So that's why well, it's a good, that's why I, it's a good time. I think we're also seeing, um, a lot of the builders slow down. They're not, yes. they're not they're, they just like said, mm. we're not building any more houses. Right. And, and there's not people coming in the, in the sales, um, uh, models in buying homes anymore. Interesting. So yes. what's, what's that going to do with inventory? Well, let right. me let me add some uh, context to that because John Burns just came out with their home builder survey and they survey build builders across the U.S. And what they found is, is about a third of them have reduced prices or have mm. offered more incentives. So if you are building <laughs> a new that. home right now, it is not a bad idea to try and go in and negotiate maybe a discount or more incentives. So if you especially go especially if you have a house to sell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you go to John Burns, you can look at the geography and the location of where you're at, and you can get a better understanding of what builders are doing in your market. But I thought that that was really fascinating. Yeah, because builders are reducing prices to make deals still work. Incentives, Absolutely. They're, yeah. And they're heavily throwing incentives yep. at Yeah, they're, they're throwing a ton, lot of seller concessions we're, to we're, assist with the rates right it. now. We're getting that big time. I and mean, we, we work with some cash buyers that were obtaining new builds 
And now they're literally emailing me going, hey, do you still have anybody who's interested in price reductions and incentives? And um, so, yeah, that's that's definitely interesting. So to it's going to start right? seeing the, uh, we'll build you a pool now, right? A free $50,000 <laughs> pool. Yes. 10% commission. <laughs> but I've, I've had it happen twice now where I've had conversations with um, a couple of our Zudelio members where they literally went back to, and this has happened all within the, probably the last 60 days. They went back to the builder and got a better price because that builder was like, Oh, I don't have, I don't have them lined up. I don't want to lose this. Cause they're going to lose the we sale. And then that house is sitting there. back out. Yep. So and then they'll eventually have to do it anyways. Yep. So they're, there's like, Hey, let's just do so, it. Right. And there could be opportunity to get a really good deal because their fiscal year ends October 31st. So if you <coughs> are not contracted on a new build and you're wanting to, this could be like an excellent time. Yeah. And this also is um, proof that working with a real estate agent will save you a lot of money because I guarantee you all these people that are getting these reductions in prices that probably work with a real estate agent where the real estate agent's going in there and asking for those reductions saying, hey, this is where the deal will work. Um, and they're negotiating those those deals. Yeah, and so there's a there's definitely a lot to unpack. Like when you said before, you know, originally the winter is coming, right? Like we were, one of the biggest things I think is you, I think Kaylee had said before, it's time to really step on the gas. And it's, it is oh, in reference gas. from like marketing, marketing. and content. All these things that we're talking about right now is, is are strategies that you agents can ultimately put into your business. It's a way to separate you, you from all of your competition out there. It's just the execution of how you're going to deliver this to your audience and then being consistent about it day after day, right? It's the person that's going to create those content, get people to raise their hand, engage with, it, with that particular piece. Then from there, you turn it into prospecting efforts, right? That's where you're going to be making contact with them directly. So they, like, for me and for all of us, right? Like there's a huge portion or a huge reason why the four of us are sitting in this room is because of the downturn and the crashes that started, uh, you know, really seven, eight, nine, right? Like it, it allowed all of us to build our businesses and build true models and systems that have, that have been poured into Zudilio in one fashion or another. But I guess what I'm saying is, is these shifts in the market, a lot of times weeds out the, the agents that do suck, right? Like that don't have the CRMs, that don't have the knowledge that you have, don't have the transactional experience that you have. And so now's an opportunity for you to really separate yourself and cement your, you know, cement yourself in your marketplace. 100%. Yeah, put your cash offer coat on, right? <laughs> Power up with a cash offer coat. Jason has a good uh, analogy here, and that's putting on the coat. To the coat of prospecting. The, the coat of the cash offer. Your cash offer coat. Yes. So that is um, going out to the your community and sharing with them that you have these options, these cash offer options to sell your home. Right? Yeah. Let's absolutely. Let's talk about these options, right? Because I think we hear the term options, right? And then we talk about, oh, a cash offer, cash plus, you know, buying cash, right? Like these are all designed to solve problems in the marketplace, right? And the problem is defined by the consumer. And right? the consumer is used to fast, fast, fast. I yep. want my whole, my home sold fast. And they're freaking out because it's been on the market for 60 days, 75 days. And they're like, what happened? I don't have any, yep. I don't have any offers. I've had two showings. What the heck? How am I get this house sold? And they're looking to you for these options. Or they're so looking to you thinking that like some, for some reason, like wrong. you're hiding their home from the market and they're attributing mm. that lack of demand to you. And like, we understand that we get that. And so how can you position yourself to have different conversations with your clients? Mm. And I think Love having it. these, these offers and options definitely helps. So yeah, let's, let's each pick one and talk on it. Um, I'll go first. I'll, I'll start with, um, you know, just even, I think a, let's, let's, uh, the, the generalness of a cash offer, right. Versus, you know, the, 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 the details of how their little nuances of how they work, the cash offer, right. Like is so powerful because it starts a conversation with that solution to the problem of needing to sell their house moving on a timeline that makes sense for them. Right. So it solves a lot of problems. And when you can have a conversation, like Kayla just said, that's that's the game changer piece of it and so the other thing that is so unique about zudilio is when you're you know cash offers have obviously been around forever but when you can bring a market value cash offer or you know a market a cash offer that makes sense for that homeowner in their terms 
where they can be in control and it's a digital experience that's no obligation and they can do it, you know, start the process at midnight, you're lowering that barrier of entry and inviting them to have a conversation that they can have only through you and the services you're bringing to them, right? So I think that it's, you know, before we go micro, it's important to look at it from a, from a macro point of view. And so that's the, the meat. I Absolutely. think it's important to note that most agents or most sellers aren't going to take the cash offer. They're going to continue you know, marketing their home on the market, yep, like a normal market, and it's gonna eventually sell. Yeah. No big deal. You got. I mean, you're looking at looking at um, at uh, supply, right? Yeah, supply but and demand. Supply. The interesting thing, though, is is I was I was reading a, a post from a real estate agent, and it was a very beautiful post. Like the graphic looked amazing, mm -hmm. and it was a carousel. So there were like five of them, and it was about selling your home and and being worried about not being able to find your next home. And literally in one of the graphics, it explains that it could all happen serendipitously and the real estate gods could like favor you. And I'm going like, if you really need to time your move, you do not want to be told that the real estate gods <laughs> could favor you, mm -hmm. right? You know, you want an option that's hard and fast and <clears throat> certain. And so are you bringing these hard, fast, certain options to your clients and if not it, maybe it's time to explore what that would look like and as jason mentioned most sellers don't choose these options they are a little bit more expensive and we get that uh, yep. but you know it's it's all about having that option posi positioning yourself as a leader in the marketplace so that you can offer them yep. yeah i'm going to stick to my guns of what i've said before i think <clears throat> it just if you have that conversation with the seller and you're truly coming from a place of, well, it's not about me, it's about you, but I wanna give okay. you the opportunity to lay all the cards out on the table. And that creates certainty and eliminates a lot of doubt for the seller. That way, hopefully they feel they made the best decision possible versus just going in there and, you know, just only providing the traditional way, which there's nothing wrong with that, but then, did you really take the time to figure out can you even hit that time frame of what they're looking for because sure, then yeah. if you can't whew, they're going to start pointing the finger big time at you because you know they're like wait hey, well i thought you said you could sell my house in 30 days i told you i only had 30 days to get this thing sold yeah i'm just giving an example yeah right. that people are going to start dealing with well and I think, agents are going to start dealing with a lot i think agents really need to start start also looking at setting great expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is this is not the market to say, I can sell your house in 30 days. I mean, right, 72, I can sell your house hours. in 30 days <laughs> if you give me Sold. a 30 day price, but right. um, the price that you have, I mean, or you, you want, you know, it may be a 90, 120 20 days and may be over, overpriced, so. Yeah, agents are hands down, um, and I'm sure a lot of ones have already figured this out. They're gonna have to start doing listing consultations again. Hmm. Yeah. And figuring out kind of just like I said, you know, why are you selling? Where are you going? How long is that gonna take? What do you need to put in your pocket in order to make that happen? And I think it's yeah. also important to, to start with a cash yeah. offer because you're you're looking at the bottom, right? The yeah, bottom define, of like define that basis. Where, where they could sell the house for right, right now, now, today. And then you say, okay, yes, we can we can list the house and we can list it up here. And but that might be 90 to 120 days, but you still have this down here where you could where you could punch out and you know, get to your next destination. Um, but if the numbers are close, you may want to really have us just really think twice about well, the numbers which are close route. often. Because and sometimes you got to tell your seller Hey, it may not be wise to sell right now. You know, it, it may not, it may not be, you know, you're, you're, you may not be able to sell right now if right. the numbers don't work. Right. And sometimes, Getting clear sometimes on that people homeowner's need to know goals. That. Sometimes people need to know that, especially if they're in a low interest rate and they're trying to move up, but they have to get this out of their house to, to get to this, the house that they want mm -hmm. next, but it's not, you know, in alignment, in, yeah. in alignment with the, with, with the, with the, with the market can bear. So. Yeah, these are these are changing. You know, I think I feel for a lot of the agents out there. The the market, you know, navigating these changing times is always what agents you know f fear of. And so, you know, I highly recommend that you position yourself in a, you know with a, a digital partner that's going to help you navigate these changes and being able to to do those things right, like where you can brand yourself to um, you know these solutions. Yeah, we have you know, all these agents marketing. That, that say that say like 
um, oh yeah, I work with I work with this this company or this company this company. Yeah, and you're, these you're are branded companies. These are these are companies that are going you're working for to free consumer. for that company. They they go direct to consumer. They're branding themselves, and eventually, in five ten years from now, they're going to be going direct to, to consumer. So you got to be careful with that, right? Yep. You want to have you want to have uh, these options branded to you, not yep. to not to the Knox and the Orchards and all these other companies, home lights, that are, home lights <laughs> that are yeah, that are branding themselves right to the consumer to eventually take a portion of that agent commission for themselves, right? So have something for yourself that you can brand um, that isn't that it's not going to go. That's not going to you know, market to your consumer after you close for the next five, six, seven years, and then get that consumer to go directly to them in five, six, seven years. Yeah. Th those companies are absolutely leveraging the real estate agent and those, that real estate agents relationships versus the agent building a business with these unique value propositions, two totally different business plans. Yeah. So be careful. Yes. Who your partners are. Yep. So I know there's a lot to, definitely a lot to unpack in this one. We could probably keep going, but I think we're probably a little pressed on time. And um, so any, any final parting thoughts? Put your, put your winner code on guys.